I'm a hiking enthusiast. It's what I do for relaxation. I live close to a trail town, and every evening after dinner, I spend at least an hour hiking one of the nearby trails. At least once a year, I take a nice long vacation to a remote location all by my lonesome. And what do I do on those vacations? You guessed it. I go hiking. Everyone's definition of remote is different. For some city folks, remote simply means the wilderness, regardless of how many people are trampling about. For others, it means seeing the occasional fellow vacationer, just not too many of them. And then there are people like me whose idea of remote equals no sign of humanity for as far as the eye can see. I'm not a survivalist or a camper. I like to stay in a lodge or a cabin with plenty of food and drinks and hike the surrounding area. Truly remote locations can be costly, but I think they're worth every penny. Over the years, I've done several of these types of hikes. I've been in areas one can only get to via helicopter. One trip I took required a one-hour mule ride to get to the cabin. The cabin I rented for my latest excursion was only accessible by boat. It was small but cozy. It was powered by a propane generator. It didn't have much in the way of amenities, but it had all I needed. A stocked refrigerator, running water, a stovetop, and a fireplace for chilly nights. The cabin was amidst the most beautiful snow-capped mountains I had ever seen. The air was cool and crisp and clean. There was no humidity. It was the kind of weather that would allow me to hike deep into the surrounding wilderness without getting winded. I had rented the cabin for a full week. The first two days I hiked near the cabin. The third day I ventured further. The fourth day I went deep into the darkest depths of the surrounding forest. The thickness of the treetops cast a gloomy shadow over everything. Even though it was mid-afternoon, the section of forest I found myself in held the image and mood of dusk. As I stopped to rest and gaze about at the unusually dim-lit surroundings, I leaned up against a western cedar tree, one of the thickest trees in the country. As I leaned against it, the tree trunk seemed to give slightly. That was strange. It felt as though the tree were artificial in the spot I put my weight against. I studied the front of the tree closely and could barely make out the thin perimeter of what appeared to be a door. It was camouflaged to near perfection. Had I not leaned against it, I would have walked right past it without giving it a second glance. Why was there a door hidden within a tree? I started feeling my way around the tree. Most of it felt like a real tree should, solid, sturdy, and heavy. It was only the door section that felt synthetic. But I did notice a branch next to the door that seemed out of place. The bark was slightly smoother and darker than the rest of the tree. When I reached up and grasped the branch, it gave way and lowered slightly before springing back into place. This was immediately followed by the bark camouflage doors sliding open to reveal a solid, metallic door. An elevator door. I instinctively looked around the forest to see if I noticed anyone watching me, but there was nobody. I was alone in the forest, staring at an elevator that was hidden within a tree. What the hell was this? I noticed a plastic green button next to the door. I had to press it, right? I couldn't just walk away and pretend I never saw this. It was too strange. I had to investigate. I could feel goosebumps tingle my arms as I reached out and pressed the green button. Within a few seconds, I heard a mechanical rumble and watched the elevator doors slide open. The interior of the elevator was metallic chrome, just as the elevator door was. I stared at the open elevator for a moment and studied it. It was shiny and spotless clean. I poked my head inside and looked around. I could see a small panel on one side of the elevator doors. It had only one, non-labeled button on it. 
I was more than slightly apprehensive about getting inside. I spoke my initial hesitation aloud. What if the elevator gets stuck? But I was the adventurous type. I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to find out where the elevator led to, so I slowly, cautiously stepped into the elevator. Nothing happened. I stood in the elevator facing the doors which remained open. I took in a deep breath as I reached out and pressed the button. Still nothing. That's when I noticed a small key dangling from a keyhole underneath the elevator's lone button. I carefully turned the key, and it stopped with a click. I then pressed the button again and suddenly the elevator rumbled to life and silence was shattered by the whoosh of elevator cables sliding the elevator deep down into the ground. Several seconds later, the elevator stopped and the doors slid open. The first thing I noticed was a small lamp with a red shade sitting atop a whiskey barrel. It was sitting against a dark green wall approximately five feet in front of me. To the left I could see a solid brick wall. I poked my head out of the elevator and looked to my right. There was a long hallway. I had come this far, there was no turning back now, so I exited the elevator. I slowly began walking down the hallway. It was approximately 50 feet long. It was smooth and painted dark green. Every 10 feet or so was a modern wall lamp that highlighted the various rusty advertising signs that were decorating the hallway walls. This was somebody's home. But who? And why? The hallway emptied into a spacious living room. There was a nice beige U-shaped sectional couch adorning the center of the room. There were various throw pillows placed on it. A square coffee table was positioned in front of the couch. It was all centered around a large screen TV. I noticed an antique stand-up radio at one corner of the room. A framed picture sat on top of the radio. It showed a man, who I assumed to be the owner of the home, in hunter's gear, holding a rifle while standing over the dead body of a hulking moose. The picture made perfect sense when I scanned the decor of the living room. The walls were lined with mounted trophy heads of various animals this man had evidently killed over the years. Deer, elk, bear, wild hog, buffalo, cougar, bobcat. I gasped and momentarily choked on my own saliva when I saw it. It was a human head mounted up there with the rest of the animal kingdom. Holy shit. I peered back over at the picture of the man standing over the moose. He was a big bulky man. I wouldn't fare well against him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was probably just dumb luck that I happened across his hidden home when he wasn't around. I needed to get out of there and fast. I bolted down the hallway, rushed into the elevator, and prayed it would take me back up. I pressed the button, and fortunately the elevator started its ascent. The ride up seemed a lot longer than the ride down, but finally the elevator came to a stop, and the doors rattled open. I feared the human-killing hunter would be standing there, and I expelled an audible breath of relief when all I saw was forest in front of me. I hurried out of the elevator and pulled the fake limb down. The elevator doors closed tight, followed by the false tree door. I made it to safety. Or so I thought. I swear every organ in my body momentarily shut down when I heard heavy footsteps plodding through the crispy dead leaves lining the forest floor. I had to be careful. If I ran, he'd hear me. He likely had a high-powered rifle on him and can shoot me down with no problem. I took slow, soft steps away from the elevator tree and inched my way toward the shield of another huge tree nearby. The footsteps were getting louder, closer. He was almost on me. Every fiber of my body urged me to pick up the pace, but I remained true to my strategy 
and moved ever so carefully so as not to make a sound. I ducked behind a tree just as the brawny man came into view. I took in slow, shallow breaths, but my heart was beating so fast and hard I wouldn't have been shocked if he heard it. I wanted to peek to confirm that the man was not aware of my presence, but I didn't dare. I just plastered myself against the shield of the tree and listened. I could hear the squeak of the branch device as he pulled it, followed by the mechanical whoosh of the elevator doors opening. It was only when the elevator doors closed, and I could hear gears grinding as it sent the elevator down to the man's secret home, that I felt brave enough to look. If the man knew I was there, he'd likely send the elevator down to make me feel at ease enough to show my face, and he'd be standing there waiting for me. But luckily that was not the case. He wasn't there. The coast was clear. I dashed through the forest back to my cabin and immediately called the folks who ran the getaway retreat. I told them that I was extremely ill, so I had to cut my vacation short and for them to send a boat to come and get me. I didn't dare tell them what I found. For all I knew, the people who ran the getaway retreat knew the killer, and the head on his wall was that of the last guy who stumbled across his lair and blabbed about it. No, sir. I kept my trap shut, and I never said a word to anyone. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. I'll be back soon with another scary story.